12 is 8. It's the same thing. Your doubling circuits. That's what, I said the ancients did know this, and that pretty much sums that up right there. Okay. 5, 1, uh, 2. 2 128 is 11, 2. 256, 13, 4. 5, 12, 8. 1,024. 7. Remember, 7 always comes after the 8, not before. 1, 2, 4, 8, 7, 5. Okay. Do you have that, Sunshine? No. Okay. I'm not a musician, so I should pick that up real quick. Real quick. Okay, pull your chair a little closer. Yeah. I think we need like a mental doggy bag to take some of the yeah, really. Uh, no, just squeeze her in the middle. Actually, take a second and let's make sunshine squeeze in here. Okay, there you go. Not too far for you. Come closer now. Intellectual enzymes. And turn your chair a little bit like this towards me. Help her, sunshine. Let's so see. how come all these okay, brilliant good. people haven't figured this out? Because they're using ones and zeros instead of nines. Well, that's the whole. I'm, I'm there's, there's, there's and stuff in the literature about uh, groups uh, mod nine. I, 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 just, I know there is, because I've, I've worked with it in, in group theory textbooks. But, but there's nobody. That could, I've never seen it done like this before. There's no, that's right. This yeah. is a different kind so of this process. This is really, really rich territory for mathematics, at least. That's, that's what I see. So it's a whole new yeah, frontier. Very rich. But, you know, I just don't know whether if you got a, a real good number theorist from some university, he would say, oh, that's just, I did that last year or something like that. I've never, I've never met I, there ain't a teacher around who's ever seen this before that can explain it. But the, there's parts of this that are, that are uh, uh, the ideas are pretty standard. I mean, like one, like three, six, nine, you know, subgroups. It isn't what they already know, it's the fact they've never unified it. Right, right. It's never been, I haven't ever seen it like this before. Yeah, right. That's the promise. They can't see what the universe is doing. They say, oh, maybe it's expanding. Maybe it's going to keep on going forever. Maybe it's going to collapse on itself. They don't know. Okay. I do know. This, you're going to know with this. Okay. Go ahead, Judy. It's the Turing model. Of the what? The Turing. Okay. I would have liked to apply this a lot to computers, but did you get that point right there on the music scale yet? I can't even see that. You know what? You have second, you, 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 you got to keep say what it was. Yeah. you got to I will uh, so it's by thirds no I'm sorry I can't see Shh, that. I know I I'm sorry it's not your fault the chart's too small no, it's if I go bong, I'm going to say it again it's got a resonance yeah. and so the resonance is a certain number of cycles per second right yeah. so he's got down there there's 256 cycles per second per C if you add 2 5 and 6 what do you get you get um, 13, which equals 13, four. and 3 plus 1 is 4, and 4 equals into the equation of all of the things that he's explained to us here. Well, what are the other That's sides? exactly what right. What are the other numbers that you 5, have? 5, 12 is your next C, which is 8. And you know 4, there's 8. And you know 7 always comes after 8. And the next C is 1,024. So 4, so what? Uh, go 4, 7, 1 again. So 4. Hmm? We go 4, 7, 1 again. Four, eight, 5 seven. comes after 7. So... Okay, so sure enough, we got 2048 is the next frequency of C. 2 and 4 is 6, so 8 and 6 is 14, 1 plus 4 is 5. Does right so that okay. work with the others, uh, with A and uh, you know, the other octaves on the. They're the same, the same distance. Actually, everything that I'm explaining, I'm not a musician. So I've never even written a paper on how this relates to music because you see how much there is already that we. And there's yeah. so much. I actually am hoping that Sunshine, I hate to say it's Sunshine, but I'm retiring after this talk this evening, and you're going to have to do the work on explaining it on the music scale, because musicians could be a whole group of people that you could be teaching about the number nine and how it relates to um, metaphysics and divinity and things. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm just giving her this the next, for a. I'm just giving her a, an Uzi. Yeah, it works for A. So, it does work it does, for A. It does, because 220 is the low A, 440 is the high A, the next one up. 
And then the doubling of that would be um, what? Uh, well, it's an electromagnetic field. That's pretty powerful now. So when we listen to music and they say it's the wings of the, in the, in the, in the Baha'i scripture, it says it's the wings of the soul uh, to the heaven, the, 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 the spiritual wings. So it really is electromagnetically in harmonics. Now I'll tell you something that, um, um, we have a question here, but I'll tell you something that Alistair did say, and he was exactly right. He said that, um, no, I forgot. <laughs> he said that, that the harmonics, I forgot. Oh well, you were right, Alistair. Go ahead. <laughs> um, I, so it kind of sounds like what you're giving us is like the theory that can be applied to every part of our culture, yeah, whether it's science, math, um, music, uh, religion, it's basically, yeah, it's, uh, it's the thing everybody's looking for. I'm giving you your attache case. Yeah, yeah. In every field of science. Just watch out for the gun that shoots backwards. Astro, yeah, yeah. It's like you have this to the most great. The reason. Giving us the reason. That's right. That's right. That's really correct. Thanks. The meaning of life to answer the questions. <laughs> Why do we live? What is our purpose? What is our goal? Where are we going to? Where, what, where did we come from? How about this for an idea? Can you, you're talking about the nine, the six, and the three. Oh, and when the nine is positive and the six and three are both negative, uh, um, <laughs> some friends of ours that came from uh, Los Angeles uh, spoke, they were the highest, and they were explaining how um, two people that are in love, if they are focusing on God, they're like that. little mirrors and they're reflecting the light towards God and yet if they're focusing on themselves or each other too much, then they're not reflecting the light and they're not getting anything either from God. So if you're, you know, if you're dwelling on yourself too much, you can't be uh, absorbing any of this good energy. Which is also like this, because when you think about it, these two things that are negative, they're actually receiving. That's right. And also, if they were positive, they're actually X's. It, which means X's is like negative, in a way. Positives are negative, you know what I mean? You're, I don't know what you mean, but I know you're completely right. I don't know what you mean by X's, well, but I you're exactly like, right. They are receiving... It's like an X. It, hmm? a, pos a positive sign, like a cross, is so like an sorry. X, right? So it means you're wrong when you're actually thinking that you're so good not to be receiving. Like you should be receiving from the so higher energy. The you receptive. know what I mean? You've got to always be tapping and receiving. You've yeah. got to hold on to it completely, even in your sleep. That's right. You've always got to, it's called your invisible cord that connects you. Uh, you, and you don't want, you always want to be able to be focused and at your epicenter, focal centers. Be an athlete when you're moving and you're exercising or when you're praying or worshiping. And the highest form is to know the name of God and intonate it and touch into that vibration. Um, what you just said is really right. Another example is um, like when we look out on the ocean and the moon's on it, we see the sea of 70,000 lights. They look like little lanterns, but we know in reality they're all reflecting from just that one moon. Okay, they, and they're all, and the only time we see that little reflection is when those facets are at the right angle. It's like a Swarovski Austrian leaded crystal prism. Okay, they're, they're, the crystal glows and has a fire on it because the facets are all, all focused, they all have the epicenter, they're all prismatic, they're a mirror. These numbers, everything I've really come here is about to turn into a prism. Behind this sheet is a prism with an immense facets. And Charlie's seen that prism, so he knows what's going on. And, um, and you're about to see it too. Before we go to that prism, was there one more thing then that we should cover? Um, I just want to say that I cracked the code to the Enneagram, but we won't try and do it. You were going to talk about the Turing in computers, but I honestly think that the best application of my work is to computer sciences. That's why I'm going to be speaking at the Maui Computer Center. And maybe if you have the time, you'll come. I'm a little frightened that most of them won't understand what I'm going to say. If you don't come, it's fine. Uh, only thing is, is that 
There is no board here other than me showing a few fractals which you were interested in, artificial intelligence. I don't address the computers. Um, I do address it. I don't do it as a difference. I didn't make these coils. There has to be a computer inventors and programmers and softwares that are going to have to do this. I don't, have the, I don't have the resources to start working on computers. If I had a laboratory, if I had a budget and an office and all that stuff, I'd be applying it to computers and technology. A lot of people want to apply my work to that. I do have the answer, but so I'm not going to jump into the touring right now. What you're going to need is a bulletproof vest. That's what you're going to need to stay safe. There's nothing I can do about that. Yeah. My bulletproof vest, do you know what it really is? You were going to say something, Judy? Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay, but I feel bad saying that I didn't go into the touring. So say what you want to say no. about the touring. When you showed the binary system, was it was two and seven. Uh huh. It, it immediately, hello, you know, it's like it doesn't work, and there are no zeros. And how how smart do you have to be to see that? Yeah, I know. It's shocking. I mean, that's I mean. Uh, that because what they're doing is they're teaching, they're saying things in science and predicated on things that are um, fallacious, and it's just amazing. In other words, they are um, they are fudging. Don't rub your eye too hard. Okay, now here's the thing. Um, if you're worried about protecting yourself, then you don't have the time to be doing other things. So I've ignored that issue too. Quantized from relativistic to quantum. He actually said that, he like, had a funny saying. He says, they're actually going to be very frightened of me, which they are, because he said that they took somebody out of the right field that came in through the side door from another approach because they haven't been able to solve it. That, that makes sense that somebody that was off the wall would figure it out. And that's the problem. <laughs> so I've never had a threat from any government or agency, ever. I have had a few scientists get drunk and uh, when they're sober say my work's the best and most wonderful they've ever seen and stuff like that and how could they have not have read my book six months sooner and this and that and then when they got drunk they called me you this you that I can't remember all the things they say but about the 20th word was a scandal of Scotsman and my best friend who was with me really burst into laughter on that <laughs> <laughs> called me everything in the book so and I like that I don't know so okay um, so we did cover this chart, which I normally forget. Um, we couldn't even touch this unless we had the toroid. Maybe we'll come back to it. I'll leave it up here. Maybe not. We'll see. Because it is interesting how it relates this to the toroid. Okay. We are now then going to pull it down. And we're about to get complicated. Okay. Everybody ready? I'll wait one second. Right. Very good point. Okay, you guys over there. Just a sec. You ready? We're about to present the We need your help. We need your help to on this. Okay. I'm gonna want you guys to chart the way, this is Judy and Charlie, I'm going to want you to chart the way how this toroid, right, I mean how this semblum right here is going to be a three-dimensional a system. We're going to try and take everybody into dimension now, okay? Because all this has ever been is a flat, straight line cross-section of a circle, okay? We're going to now take them into dimension, and Charlie knows how a little bit. Yeah, I, I remember from yesterday a little bit about that. Okay. My students probably remember better. And he has great students. They're focused, they're yeah, concentrated. They're yeah. they, I'll, I'll ask them what they remember. And, yeah. Okay. They probably, Willow, I'm sure, remembers. Because she was the one that was, and then Renee was the one that Okay. We have right here, so I'm telling you the answer before we go with Charlie's friend. We're all going to try and help you understand. This right here, the reason these two points are different than these two points as this is telling you simply, nothing fancy, this is a coordinate system. On a simple coordinate system, you have an x, y, z axis. Okay. Okay, this is your x, this is your y, and this is your z. Everyone follow that? And z comes out at you, essentially? Z comes out at you. 
like that. It's the dandelion puff principle. It's really coming out this way, this way, but it's in a phasing of thirds. Thirds means that it's coming out, this one's little, this is medium, and this is long. And the next one coming out to it, if this is representing a tile or a space, there's going to be one, two, 